Hey guys, how's it going? It's Leon here. Today I'm going to talk about how ADHD individuals can get unstuck and start taking action. So in my last video, I talked about different patterns that people with ADHD get into that tends to get them stuck and paralyzed when it comes to taking action. I'm going to do a brief review of what those patterns are and talk about how you could address them. So the first pattern here is that the person with ADHD gets a hobby. It could be a guitar or a book they want to read. You just name any kind of hobby that kind of comes to mind that you want to do. And what happens is that you get the guitar or you get the book and it ends up sitting in your room for a very long time, for months and months and months, and you don't pick it up. So that is the first pattern. And you can interpret this pattern how you may according to how it manifests in you. The next pattern here is that say the person with HD is given a task such as at school or work, or they give themselves a task to do. They want to do a project. The thing is, when they get this task, they're overwhelmed by a feeling of vagueness because they have to be able to break down the task to figure out what to do about it. And that involves a lot of planning, thinking about planning. And people with ADHD, they don't like to think about planning. And at the same time, they have a hard time tolerating the vagueness of the task. They end up getting overwhelmed. They end up getting into avoidance. So the next pattern here is very similar to the last one in that the person with ADHD gets an assignment or they give themselves an assignment and they come up with a lot of ambitious ideas of what they want to do about it. They get overwhelmed by the number of ideas that they have, causing them to get into avoidance. And then they end up finishing that task last minute. And it's not very much to their liking because they had a lot of great ideas to begin with, and they're not able to bring a lot of them to fruition. So what do you do about these patterns? So this is what I'm going to talk about here. So now let's talk about how you could address these patterns one at a time. When you know how to address this first pattern here, that's going to help you be able to address the other patterns because what you use to address the first pattern gets applied to the other patterns. So let's talk about the first one here. So you have a hobby, you never get around to doing it. I'm going to use the example of having a guitar or having a book and it's on the other side of your room and you never get around to uh, your hobby. So what do you do here? So when I work with my clients who have such issues, since I work with them online, I tell them to get that guitar and put it on their lap or get that book and bring it in front of them and just flip through the pages. And that's it. They don't have to do anything more. The thing is the HD mind is very out of sight, out of mind. So if it's on the other side of the room, even though it's your room, um, you're not going to pay attention to it, right? So you have to bring it to you. And the other thing is that the ADHD mind is very tangible. So when you feel things, when you touch things, that makes it real. So that's the whole point of this exercise is that you, uh, you're making it real. The second thing that the ADHD mind gets in trouble with is that it gets really ambitious. So when that guitar, when that book is sitting on the other side of the room and you think about, hmm, what am I going to do with my hobby? I'm going to play all these chords and start to play all these songs with these chords, or I'm going to finish this book and, and write an essay on it or think about that book. When you think about the whole entire project in itself, you're going to get overwhelmed. So that's why you never get around to doing it. So the whole point of this exercise of bringing that item or that hobby to you and just being with it for just even a brief time and not having to do anything about it that is an excellent first step. It breaks that you out of that old pattern in which you're not doing anything about it. It breaks you out of that paralysis. So say that a hobby you want to do is not a physical object, it's something that is on your computer screen. What you do is that you open up that program and that is it. Or say it's at a physical location. Um, you go to that location. So for example, say you want to work out at the gym, you go to the gym and you just stand there. You don't even have to be able to you don't have to do any exercises. All you have to do is go to the gym. So all this makes the activity much more tangible. 
And then it also taps into a strength that people with HD have is that once they get stimulated with something, they start to come up with ideas of what to do. So once that guitar is on your lap, you start to think about, oh, I could do this with my guitar. Or once you have the book here, it's like, oh, I could start to look through the book. You find some things that look interesting. It's like, hmm, I'm starting to be more interested in reading this book. So basically what I'm saying here is that you could rely on a strength that people with HD have, and that is the capacity to get inspired. And so when you have that guitar on your lap or you have that book in your hand, you start to get inspired about what you want to do. It taps into that HD mind's tendency to get really curious and excited about what you could do. So what do you do about the following patterns here? So just like what I said, how you deal with these patterns builds off what I've just said before with the first pattern. So the first part of both of these patterns is very similar. I just want you to kind of focus on this for now. And what it is, is that the first one's about the feeling of vagueness about the task because the task appears to be really gargantuan to you. So how do you get started, right? Or you start to think about the planning and that is overwhelming because it seems like that's a lot to do. And this is not a thing that people with HD are very strong at. The second pattern here is about ambitious ideas. And it's similar to what I've mentioned before with the vagueness of the task and the planning, because ambitious ideas could appear like it's a lot, it's a gargantuan, and thus it overwhelms the ADHD brain. So what I'm going to talk about here is how it could break down the overwhelm that comes from looking at the gargantuanness of the vagueness of the task, the planning, or the ambition of the ideas, you simplify the planning process and you rely on your momentum piece. The ADHD mind, once it's inspired, it starts to have momentum. It gets sucked into the activity. It can rely on hyper-focus in order to get you hooked and engaged in the activity that you are in. So look at that book, open up that program and put that guitar on your lap and when you engage in these things, do it with that sense of curiosity and wonder that people with HD have. And do not worry about the future phases. The ADHD brain tends to get really ambitious and tries to think about everything that it needs to do. So by focusing on one phase at a time and putting the rest on a shelf, you're, what you're doing here is that you're preventing overwhelm. So now we're going on to the next phase here. Now it's time to think about planning. And when you're in the planning phase, put away the execution phase, put that on the shelf. So when it comes to the planning phase, all you need to do is come up with a general outline, come up with the steps that you hypothesize you need to take in order to do the activity or task that you have in mind. You don't have to make this super elaborate because you could always come back to the planning phase and you start revising it. Often when we start executing the tasks. When we start to get into that execution mode and start to take action, we start to find a clear way forward. And so you can always come back to the planning phase to revise what the next steps are. So you create a general idea, a general outline. Don't focus too much on it. What's important is to take a look at that first step you identified and you start working on that. You put everything else aside. Don't focus on the future steps. Focus on that first step that you need to take. And often there's more than one possible first step. It doesn't really matter. When it comes to most activities, there's more than one way in, in terms of starting that activity. When you get started, the way forward will be clearer and clearer. So you can start from anywhere. It doesn't matter if it's a so-called mistake because then you could just start from a different direction. So identify that first step and you start somewhere. And now you're out of the planning phase and you're getting into the execution phase. And again, you always could return back to the planning phase to revise what you need to do. The AC brain tends to get really stressed out when it comes to planning. So this is why it's important not to make it too elaborate not to try to come up with the perfect plan or the perfect answer and have some very specific details set in stone and set in place. It's to prevent the HD brain from getting overwhelmed. When you know that you could always come back and you could revise a plan 
which, you know, the HD brain is pretty good at doing this. That makes you feel much more relaxed because when you come up with a plan, you know, you don't have to hold yourself to the perfect answer. The HD brain can sometimes get really perfectionistic. In most cases, you probably need to revise the plan anyway after you start taking action. So now we're on to the execution phase, the doing phase. So what you do here is that you take that first step that you identified and then you form a mini habit around that first step. I'm going to let you know what I mean by that. So what a mini habit is, is that you do something related to that first step that seems ridiculously easy. It creates a low bar for entry for you to do that activity, to get started doing that activity. I'll give you an example. So if you're setting out to exercise 20 minutes a day or to read one chapter of a book a day, you're not going to get around to doing it. The HC brain gets really overwhelmed by that. So what you do is you create a ridiculously low bar for entry. You tell yourself, I'm just going to do a few push-ups a day. I'm going to read a few pages a day or just read something that's less than a chapter a day. Your HC brain is going to be much less overwhelmed and it's going to get started on the activity. So the key thing here is that this allows the brain, this tricks the ADHD brain to get started on activities. If you could do a few push-ups or read a few pages a day, and you consider that a success, you're going to get these short-term rewards. The HD brain is driven by short-term rewards that are very tangible. It's not driven by um, rewards that seem very, very far away. It's not motivated by that. So when you can do that, you're going to start to build momentum. It doesn't mean that you stay here. Eventually, when you do this for a week, then you could start to plan another mini habit that builds on a previous one. So you could say to yourself, I'm going to do more push-ups, like maybe 10 push-ups or read a full chapter or something along those lines. But the key thing here and it is to consider it a success after reading a few pages or doing a few push-ups a day. If you do more, that's great, right? The whole thing here is that that allows this low bar for entry. Then what you do is that you do this for every single step in the plan. So after you start to get into that first step and you're starting to address more and more of it, then when you're feeling good about it, feeling good about taking action on that first step, you go back and you revise that plan. You think about what that next step is and you start to form a mini habit around that next step. What this does is that this addresses the HD brain's tendency to get really ambitious and get really perfectionistic. The problem with that is that the HD brain tends to think about so many steps at the same time and all the things that you have to do. What happens is that the HD brain gets really, really overwhelmed and then it starts to avoid planning or taking action. Get into the execution phase, focus on that first step. You don't think about planning when you're in the execution phase. Put that on a shelf. Then you go back to the planning phase. You put the execution phase on the shelf. Think about what the next step is here. Then you go form a mini habit around that next step. Focus on the execution. This helps break things down so that ADHD mind gets less overwhelmed. But then later on, you're going to start to build momentum. And the ADHD brain thrives on momentum. I want to let you know that if you want to be able to gain perspective on, say that you have past pain in your life, you have past periods in your life, which were painful to you, how you could come to a certain kind of perspective on that. I've written an article on this very topic. It's called How to Fully Embrace Life as Art. You want to check that out. I have a link to that article down below in the description section. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you have enjoyed it.